Well, hello everybody and welcome to Country Know How and Happy New Year's. Uh, hope you're all going to have a good new year and uh, hope all your resolutions come to, uh, through the way you want them. Uh, today we're going to talk about smoking ribs. Uh, the way I, I like to smoke them, it's pretty simple and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll learn something from this video. Okay, as you can see, the uh, charcoal's uh, starting to get going here. So the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, while it's still uh, getting hot, let's go ahead and put a couple of good chunks of hickory on here. Uh, and just get it a little bit right in there like that. And as I go along, I'll just add more hickory and more charcoal. Uh, but, uh, some of the uh, uh, charcoal light are still burning off of it, but by the time those get white, the uh, hickory will start catching up. Uh, you know, uh, hickory chips, uh, not real big, uh, and uh, you know, those two right there will burn a good while. And uh, as I go, though, I'll add a little charcoal and a little hickory. As and uh, it's pretty simple, you know. To me, barbecuing is not rocket science. You don't have to go through a bunch of formulas and. You know, scrounge up this and that and the other different kinds of wood. It's just uh, heat and hickory. You know, and this and it's makes some of the best, finest barbecue you ever get a hold of. In fact, to me, it's the best. Just heat and hick. You know, they use the charcoal as more of a heat source, and the hickory as the smoke and the flavor in it. And so, uh, we'll let those catch up, and then we'll come back and uh, I'll show you about the preparing the meat and. You know, I'll, I'll deal with uh, putting on there and searing it and so forth. Anyway, we'll be back shortly. Alright, so the grill is up to about 250 degrees now and uh, holding pretty steady there. Uh, next thing I'm going to do the next thing I'm going to do just go ahead and put my dry rub on here. Uh, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, you can look around and find different rub recipes or just buy some in the store and make this up. But uh, McCormick's and other people make a uh, pretty good dry rub. I think if you're going to use any uh, store made, there's a lot of different good ones out there. But the, the big name brand, I would say McCormick's anything. I'm just going to take this rub and put it on here kind of liberally. Uh, Move this bottle, as you can sure see. And I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see a little better too. Uh, I put it on there pretty much, you know, pretty liberally. Uh, and if you go to make your own rub, uh, the ingredients, uh, you know, meat tenderizer, seasoned meat tenderizer is good in it. A little bit of chili powder, maybe some Camino. Uh, you can maybe put. Uh, a little salt, you don't have to put much because of the seasoned meat tenderizer, you can put some seasoned salt in it. I'm just going to rub this in real good, just, you know, just massage it in until uh, it, you know, just soaks up the, the juice and, I mean, the water in the meat, and that kind of soaks it in a little. And, uh, now, uh, I'm not going to put any on the bottom of the ribs, but, uh, because, it's mostly bone under there. There's really not a whole lot of need in that. Now, uh, next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and open up the grill. And uh, I'm going to lay them just uh, pretty close to the fire right at first. And then after uh, a few minutes when it starts to kind of brown, uh, then I'll move them over away from the fire and uh, out of the direct heat and just let them smoke just kind of slow so uh i'm, I'm gonna use my hand this time and i uh, hope y'all can see this now i'm like all right uh i'm just gonna have it here uh, i don't have anything out here i'm not gonna have it over the fire very long just uh, a minute 
shouldn't be using my hand. I ought to be using a fork. Bad example. Just kind of, you know, do that for just a minute. And, uh, I'm going to lay it there and uh, we'll come back here in a minute and uh, I'll tip them out or turn them over. Alright, so now uh, they probably, let's turn them over. Yeah, they, they started to kind of brown a little bit. Uh, I got a little area in the front. I'm going to just, uh, there in this one corner, I'm going to go ahead and get that just sit over the fire and get seared a little bit. Uh, bottom side, I'm not worried about searing much. Uh, you know, just bone, mostly bone, and a little bit of tissue there. Now it's, it's kind of, you know, seared a little bit. It's good enough. And, uh, it's already starting to cook. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this right uh, here. This is a, a just a, some people call it a mop or sop. Uh, not sure uh, whichever you want you want to call it. It's a real basic recipe. Uh, one part onion juice, one part apple cider vinegar, one part uh, dark beer. And the best way to make this is the onion juice up to me is take one and a half cups of uh, onions and one cup of water, put it in a uh, blender, blend it up. You want to do it outside because you'll have onion smell everywhere in the house. But uh, just take that. And the onion juice that you make up out of that, strain all the onion off of it, and you use one. I use eight ounces of onion juice, eight ounces of uh, the uh, beer, and eight ounces of. You know, I've got neighbors over there talking a little loud, so it's distracting me. But eight ounces of onion juice, eight ounces of the dark beer, and eight ounces of the apple cider vinegar. Put it in a thing like this, shake it up good and save it. It can last, it, the older it gets the better. So if it sits in there a year, it's okay. Now, <coughs> so the next thing I'm gonna do is just take this and I'm gonna start spraying on it. Spraying it on. And just, I wanna soak it real good. I want to see it just dripping off of it real good, you know. And you know, the, the apple cider vinegar and the hops in the beer are what's going to make it uh, uh, tenderize, you know, as it goes. As they sit there and smoke a long time, they're just going to get real tender. And uh, of course, you know, with the uh, just time too of it cooking, it's, uh, see it, and you might be able to see or not, that stuff is just dripping off of it. And about every couple of hours, I'm going to come back out here and soak it down again until about, you know, say maybe an hour or so before they're done. Now all you have to do is close the lid, keep the temperature around 250 or so degrees for four to six hours. And brush the top with uh, barbecue sauce and place in the oven and broil them for about 10 minutes or so until the sauce gets good and caramelized and that's it